Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, we're learning some new details right now about a Western Kentucky school bus driver who police say hit and killed a five-year-old. Rowan County officials may be headed to Frankfort today to meet with the governor. We'll have a live report on developments. And anyone with a building for rent might want to listen up. The Lexington Fire Department really needs your help to give dozens of kids a Merry Christmas. We'll have the details on how you can help right here on WKYT This Morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Nice to have you with us on WKYT on this Tuesday. That's a little bit like a Monday for some who are getting back at it, who had the day off on Columbus Day. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It's hard to believe that we're already starting to mention the C word, Christmas. Well, we are. And uh, frost as well, it looks like, as we head into the weekend, uh, because of the, the times are changing, temperatures yeah. uh, going that way. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we're going to be seeing about a 5 to 10 degree drop for today as opposed to yesterday. Yesterday, Felt fantastic toward the afternoon. This afternoon might be a little bit cool. That front has since moved on through. You can see that tracking off through Virginia and also West Virginia. Uh, for us, we are good to go. We're nice and clear. A huge dome of higher pressure settles on in. That means don't expect any rain out of that. Upper 50s to around 60 degrees. Pretty comfortable this morning. Heading in toward the afternoon, 67 isn't that bad. However, throw in a little wind with that, and it could be on the chilly side for some. It's some part of the day. So much cooler day in store. Focus of the forecast. Still that weekend. I know it's far away, but there's really not much going on in between now and then. We'll talk about that frost coming up in a few minutes. Okay, thank you, Mike. WKYT News is learning some new details this morning about a Western Kentucky bus driver who police say accidentally hit and killed a kindergartner. Two weeks ago, five year old Jaden Hawkins was hit and killed while getting off of his bus. The bus driver says she did not see him. WKYT's Hillary Thornton's at our live desk this morning with an investigation into the driver's record and what it says about her. Good morning, Rebecca and Bill. The bus driver Janine Dockery received a satisfactory grade in almost every single category. And Butler County Schools say there have been no complaints filed against her in her 10 years as a driver. However, we have learned one family says that is not the case. The family who asked not to be shown on camera says they complained to the director of transportation and superintendent multiple times last school year. About five times last year or more complaining about just she's taking off too fast. She's driving down our road too fast. Superintendent Scott Howard says the meetings he remembers with that family centered around behavior and discipline issues on the bus, but nothing to do with Dockery's driving. Howard says Dockery is still employed by the district, but is on leave. Now, this is certainly a tragedy for that entire community. Those who were close to Jaden Hawkins are trying to make a change for the better by passing a new law in the state of Kentucky. We will have more on that coming up at 530. For now, at the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. All right, thank you so much, Hillary. A Clay County man faces a murder charge this morning after the shooting death of his niece. Monday afternoon, state police arrested 64 year old Joe Collins after a shooting on Highway 149 near Manchester. Police say Collins and the victim, 41 year old Goldie Bowling, got into an argument and he ended up shooting her. She later died at a hospital. Police tell us they're still trying to figure out exactly what led to the argument and shooting. Police are looking for three persons of interest after a man was found dead in a Pulaski County rental cabin. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says a 34-year-old Danny Poor was found shot to death Sunday afternoon inside a cabin at the Pulaski County Park. They think he was killed at most uh, one day before they found him. At this point, police are not sure what led to the shooting. The park's a very safe, safe place. Uh, tourist traffic there is considerable in the summer, and we just don't have any trouble there. Police say Kara Bell and Jesse and Rexel Brown are those persons of interest. Investigators say Poor was living in Louisville but was originally from Monticello. Later today, a man charged with the first murder in Lexington of 2015 is set to be in court. Back in February, Matthew Donahue was indicted for murdering his boyfriend, Todd Schumacher. Investigators say Donahue stabbed Schumacher at the couple's home on Lamont Drive back on January 18th. Donahue is also accused of putting Schumacher's dog in a 
hot oven a few months before the murder. A woman arrested after her boyfriend was found dead in a freezer was in court to answer to evidence tampering charges. Teresa Owens went in front of a Pulaski County judge yesterday. Owens was charged with abuse of a corpse and evidence tampering after her boyfriend, Gary Jinks, was found stuffed into a freezer back in September. Investigators don't believe Jinx died in a suspicious manner. Ms. Owens stated that she panicked. Uh, she was embarrassed of her house. Uh, she panicked and didn't know what to do, so it wasn't a logical thing to do. But that's what she done. And and the judge decided there was enough evidence to send the case against Owens to a grand jury. Investigators say they're waiting on blood work before deciding if Jinx's death was natural or foul play. A group of Rowan County leaders is hoping to meet with Governor Bashir today about the issue of county clerks and marriage licenses. Yeah, according to the Family Foundation, the group from Rowan County wants to offer the governor help in resolving the situation. WKYT's Mark Barber is at the Capitol today with the latest on the group's reported visit. Good morning to you. Good morning, Rebecca. In about five hours, 10 to 12 Rowan County leaders will be coming here to Frankfurt, as you mentioned, hoping to meet with Governor Steve Bashir. According to the Family Foundation, they are hoping to offer their assistance to the governor in how to resolve the issues with county clerks who are refusing to issue marriage licenses to same sex couples. Now, we know that two other counties, aside from Rowan County, those clerks are refusing to issue those marriage licenses to same sex couples. So, this is an issue that is playing out in several counties across Kentucky. Now, Governor Steve Bashir has already said that he will not call a special legislative session to deal with the issue. Now, we are learning about today's possible meeting from the Family Foundation. Now, the Family Foundation is not saying which people will be coming here today from Rowan County. We do not know if Kim Davis will be in attendance, if the mayor, any other city leaders will be in attendance. The press release only says 10 to 12 city or area leaders. Now, we do know that one of them will be the Reverend Randy Smith. He is a spokesperson for the group, and we're told that he hopes that the brief meeting with the governor will help assure that the situation that has happened in Moorhead will never happen again. Now, again, all of this set to start playing out here in about five hours when this group here comes to the Capitol building to meet with Governor Steve Bashir at 10 a.m. Now, again, we do not even know if the governor has agreed to meet with this group, so we are still waiting to find out more information about this. And as soon as we learn more, we'll bring it to you right here on WKYT. Live in Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. Nice shot there. Thanks so much, Mark. A national anti religious group is speaking to us about why they want a Jessamine County town to remove a religious symbol from their city. As we told you over the weekend, the Wisconsin based Freedom from Religion Foundation sent an email to Wilmore Mayor Harold Rainwater asking him to remove a cross from the town's water tower. The city argues that the cross and water tower are on private land and that support for the cross has been very high. The foundation disagrees. Uh, a city-owned um, object, it needs to be free from religion. While Mayor Rainwater says that the city won't take the cross down unless they are forced to, the foundation is considering legal action against the city if the cross isn't removed. Today, Lexington city leaders will be discussing a proposal to move and combine some of the city's fire stations. The city paid Public Safety Solutions Incorporated to conduct a study which is based on population shifts in Lexington. That study recommends combining the Marino Street and West Jefferson Street fire stations downtown. It also recommends adding a station at Masterson Station and moving fire stations along Tates Creek Road and Finney Drive. The Urban County Council will discuss the study during a meeting tonight. And with Christmas about two and a half months away, Lexington's finest are starting up their annual toy program. But to get started, Lexington firefighters need a place to store all of those toys and a place to hand them out. Firefighters are asking for someone to let them use their building. If you can help, you're asked to let the fire department know very soon. Firefighters say the program helps around 2,000 children in Fayette County each year. And obviously, it's a temporary location, and yeah. so each year they move on and something happens with the yeah. building. So they need one this year. All right, 509 on WKYT. We're just getting started on your Tuesday. After the break, he likes scotch, poetry, his good friend Baxter, and hopefully a New York bar built in his image. We'll show you a Manhattan club built as an honor to comedian Will Ferrell after this. And some men say they read Playboy just for the articles. Find out why that may become more believable. An iconic adult magazine sends shockwaves with a big announcement.
And we're looking at temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Very nice this morning, but there are some cooler days ahead. I'll show you those temperatures and those numbers coming up next.